everybody. I'm Diane Hall with AARP Missouri, and I'd like to welcome you to our third, can you believe it's our third yoga fall class? This is part of AARP Missouri's Moving It Fitness Series. The class is suitable for many levels of fitness. However, you should have received some cautions and guidelines in the reminder about the class. Please, please adhere to those guidelines. If you have any concerns, check with your doctor before you participate. AARP Missouri also offers classes called Forever Fit and Light. We have links to programs that we've been in the past that are on video like Tai Chi and you can participate from the recordings. All of our programming is created with people 50 plus in mind, but it's good for anybody of any age and in this internet age anywhere. To learn more about these opportunities, please go to aarp.org slash moving it. You'll find information there about our new sweepstakes for a Fitbit Versa and other prizes too. So if you haven't signed up, do it today. Now we realize at AARP that our fitness series like Yoga for All can be great options for people who may not be able to attend a traditional fitness class like caregivers or those of us who are staying home to reduce our risk during the pandemic. AARP has other resources for caregivers, up-to-date COVID-19 information, and technology information on our website at aarp.org near you. Now, if this is your first time with an AARP fitness class, make sure that your Zoom is set up properly so we can all hear and see at the same time. The first thing you should do is that you have pinned our instructor, Tyler Ferguson. Tyler, wave so everybody can see your little Hollywood square. There she is. If you pin Tyler, you'll see the screen throughout the class so you can follow the moves. To do that, you want to hover your cursor, take your mouse and put it over Tyler's square until you see the three dots. Click on the three dots and there'll be an option to pin her. When you click on pin, she'll stay on your screen the whole time. And one more thing that would really help us out is you please make sure to mute yourself and ends and then Tyler will start taking questions. And I will confess that if you don't mute yourself and you are, you've got background noise, I will probably find you and mute you myself. So you need to unmute at the end so that you can ask questions. Now let's get started with for all. Again, our instructor is Tyler Ferguson from Caliente Fitness. Tyler, take it away. Hi guys, good morning. Welcome to week number three. It's nice to see you all. You can keep your cameras on or off. It's really a personal preference for you, which one you prefer. So that's so your, that's your um, I wanted to make a couple quick announcements before we get started. Today is the day we're going to use our yoga strap or use our home remedy for our yoga strap, which in my case is going to be this dish towel. Now you don't need to do this right now, but I want to show you where we're going to go with this. So when you're on your back and it's harder to see the screen, you can see where we're going to go. But we're going to take the strap, hook it along the bottom of the foot. So now see how it makes my arms longer? And then that gives me this lever to start to work my leg with these longer arms. My shoulder can be relaxed. So that's how we're going to use our dish towel or towel or belt today. I'll just refer to it as the strap. And then we'll also cue our blocks today. We'll begin our meditation and our grounding on our back. So just make sure that whatever side that you lie down on, the strap is right by your ear because that's going to be the first thing we use right out of our meditation. In our meditation, I'm going to be very still, so don't think that the camera froze. Um, it'll just be me talking to you about how to arrive into your practice. After you've come to your back, you can bend your knees and place your feet on the ground and check into your low back and notice how it feels. If you're looking at the screen right now, take your eye gaze up to the ceiling and just concentrate on listening to my voice. Take a breath in, bring your awareness to your low back and then slide one leg long. Keep paying attention to your back and notice if your back likes that or not. If your back is happy with sliding your leg long, you can slide your other leg long and notice if the back is still happy with that. If your back is unhappy or you feel some tightness or pull, feel free at any time to re-bend the knees and place the feet back on the floor. It's just a matter of preference in this grounding. If you re-bend the knees and put the feet flat on the floor, you can let the knees fall in toward one another. Just whatever feels good for you in this grounding. So choose your shape, close your eyes, and bring your awareness to your breath. 
Notice the breath passing over the nostrils in your inhale, moving along the back of the throat, and then exiting back out across the back of the throat and out of the nostrils on your exhale. We're gonna begin our conscious breathing today. And there are benefits of breathing consciously. It's not that you need to bring your awareness to your breath in order to survive, but by breathing consciously, consciously you can reduce or regulate the cortisol release of the body, which then reduces the amount of stress put on the body. And that can lower your um, heart rate or your blood pressure by reducing the cortisol and elongating the breath. It can also reduce the blood sugar in the body and it can help you increase awareness. So those are all benefits of this conscious breathing. In today's conscious breathing exercise, we're gonna hope that the exhale is longer than the length of the inhale. So begin to count the length of your inhale here and then count the length of your exhale, exhale and notice if the exhale is longer. Continue to become aware of the inhale and exhale length, using that count not only as information for lengthening the exhale, but also as a bit of a mantra to keep your mind in the present moment, in the present work at the moment. Our yoga practice is a mindful practice where we begin to become aware of the subtleties of the body. We can notice patterns that arrive in our body. We can notice how we breathe. You can think of your yoga mat as like a little laboratory. So we're hanging out in our little lab, becoming more aware and mindful, taking some inventory about our body today and how we feel with the goal of this moment of lengthening our exhale in order to reduce the cortisol output Cortisol is a stress hormone, and that stress hormone increases our heart rate, and it increases our blood sugar levels. Cortisol is a beneficial hormone if you're in danger. So if a giant bear is chasing you, you want to have cortisol pumping in your body. But sometimes when we breathe shallow, <sighs> soft, short inhales into the chest and short exhales out, that can continue to put us into our fight or flight, continuing to produce cortisol in the body. So we wanna reverse that work. We wanna release hormones of rest and digest. Okay, that's it, Beaver, that's it, baby. <laughs> so apparently somebody's pet is practicing conscious breathing too, and that's awesome. <laughs> Take one more round of breath here. Open up your eyes and then slide one heel back up to your seat if your legs are extended long and your other heel back up to your seat so that your knees are bent and your feet are flat on the ground. Go ahead and grab your belt or whatever tool you're using for your belt. Now consciously, slowly bring your right knee into your chest and then strap your belt as best you can along the bottom of your foot. Now notice if you're in the arch or the skin, fleshy, tissuey places of the foot, try to slide it up and make it more on the ball, make it more on the bone of your foot. Use both hands to grab either side of the strap and then pull the shoulders away from your ears and just relax your upper back muscles and try to relax your shoulders as much as you can here. You can play around with bending the knee into the chest and then straightening the foot out and lengthening it through the back of the leg, the bottom of the foot up to the ceiling. Just do a couple rounds of that and then pause and notice where you feel sensation in this exercise. Some of your legs might be further away than others and that's fine. Meet yourself exactly where you are today and do this uh, work so it benefits you. You could slide your left leg long and see if the low back will tolerate one leg long and the opposite leg extended. Switch both of your straps into your right hand. If your right leg is in the strap, uh, put both straps in your right hand 
and take your left hand and put it on top of your left hip. Squeeze your left glute and feel the left hip pin down to the floor. Now, if your knee is bent, you wouldn't do this so much, that's okay. And then allow your right leg to open up out to the side. So you're holding your foot in your strap, allowing the right leg to open. Don't let the left hip peel up off the ground. So we're taking the leg away from the midline of our body first. We're not coming across the midline, across the left leg. We're taking it away from the body first. Keep the left hip pinned down. And if the left hip starts to peel up, just bring the leg, right leg back to center, repin the left hip, open it up again. You might be able to place your elbow down of the arm that's holding the strap and allow your right leg or the leg in the strap to feel this external rotation in the hip. See if you can breathe just like you did in the beginning of class. And then bring the leg back up to the center, back up to the top, the bottom of the foot, face of the ceiling. Now switch hands, place the straps into your left hand. And now your right arm is gonna go right out to the side of the room like a T. Pull your right leg across the midline of your body, across the top of your left leg. Your left foot, the piggy toe can touch the ground as you bring your right leg across your body, but try to keep your right shoulder on the ground as best you can. If you're not exactly sure what this looks like, carefully you can lift up your head and look at the screen. So my right shoulder is down on the ground as much as possible, and my right leg is across the body. If you don't have a strap, you can just hold onto your leg and do this, or bend your knee and did it like we did it last week with a knee bent. Take a breath into this twist, and bring your right leg back up to the ceiling. Now, check out this little twist, or this little trick. <clears throat> Pause here, take any other little activations in the right leg before we switch to the left leg. And then the way we're gonna switch to the left leg is slide the left heel up on the ground, bend the left knee again, and then put the left leg or the left foot in the strap with the right foot, and then just switch. Take the right foot out of the strap, put the right foot down on the ground and bend the right knee, and we'll start with the left leg extended, right knee bent, right foot on the ground. Take the shoulders out of the ears, organize the spine to make sure it's in neutral. Try to bring your shoulders down on the ground and then start to find movements on this side. So you can bend and extend through the leg, bend the knee and extend. You could point the ankle and flex here. And then you can slide the right leg long if the low back is into that. Now, last week when we didn't use the strap, we just brought the knee into the chest. And if you don't have a strap today, feel free to do that. This is just a little bit different sensation. Take the strap and put it into your left hand. Put your right hand on your right hip, squeeze your right glute, keep your right hip pinned down to the ground and open up your left leg away from your body out to the left side. You have an option to bring your elbow down if it reaches. And remember, you to go only go as far as it feels safe and good in your body. If your right hip starts to come up off the ground, off of that pin, just close the left leg, repin the hip, and only take the leg as far out as you can, maintaining a hip pin. Activating the full right leg by pushing through the heel and hugging the quad muscle to the bone will help you pin the hip. Take a round or two of breath into this external rotation of your left hip, and then bring it all back up to center. Switch your grip, put the strap in your right hand now. Take your left arm out and put it to a T. Begin to pull your left leg across the midline of your body, across the top of your right thigh. You can roll your right foot to the piggy toe or the outside edge, but try to keep your left arm on the ground behind you. Hopefully you're feeling a deep stretch in the hip. And see if you can pause here and organize and notice if you're holding on unnecessarily to any tension. Maybe you're grinding in your jaw, or you're squinching your eyes shut, or you're holding on to unnecessary tension. See if you can just find a little bit of surrender or release in this shape. 
And notice if you can take a deep inhale and exhale, just like the ones from the beginning of class in this shape. Guide your leg back up to the ceiling when you're ready. And then take any final little movements that feel good to you before we release the strap and move on to our next exercise. To remove the strap, just simply bend the knee into the chest, take the strap down, and then draw the other knee in. So we got both knees into the chest, hugging on the shin bones and maybe rocking side to side and just giving the low back a little bit of um, feedback from the mat that you're on and a little bit of length in the spine and a massage. Now here's our chest exercise for today. I want you to roll over onto your side so that you can see the, um, see the screen. <clears throat> and then organize, use the back of your mat, that line to make your spine parallel to it. So I'm gonna push my shoulders back and make sure my shoulders are in line with my hips. And that line is parallel to the line on the mat that I'm working on or an imaginary line. At this point, if you have a larger towel or pad or blanket, it would be nice to bring that in and give your head something to rest on. So if you have a small pillow or something or even your yoga block, if nothing else, try to make a pad for your head to rest on here. So my shoulders are stacked, my hips and my knees are stacked. Pull your knees into your chest as much as you can and elongate your arms or out in front of you, extend your arms out in front of you. My right hand is clapping right on top of my left hand because I'm on my left side of my body. So I'm gonna refer to it as my top hand. So you've got your top knee, top shoulder, top hand. Relax your head here. Now we're gonna open up our chest and put the, our back onto the ground while keeping our knees and our hips relatively stacked. It goes like this. Take your top hand, start to sweep it up towards the ceiling and then open up your chest and open up your eye gaze. Let your head roll to the back of the head so you're looking at the ceiling and try to bring your arm over to the opposite side without shifting your knee or your hip stack too much. And then just pause, try to relax your shoulder, relax your neck and see if you don't get a little bit of stretch in your chest here. Calm your breathing. And if your nervous system starts to kick into a little fight and flight, just breathe and calm it down. And then notice if you're holding on or not surrendering into this shape. See if you can allow yourself to let go and get a little bit deeper. It takes some time, maybe for the tissues to respond and adjust to this. Now, if you didn't quite get it, you can feel free to take your arm and revisit, scrape the fingers across the ceiling, sweep across the ceiling like a paintbrush. Revisit, get yourself all set up, and then see if you can, now that you know where we're going, see if you can find it once again. So you can take some time allowing yourself to find this pose. You can make it more dynamic where you sweep the fingers across the ceiling and move more into it, or you can be more static where you just rest and find the pose. And we're gonna change it up a little bit, but if you have a rotator cuff injury, this might be a little challenging for you. So feel free to continue to do this movement or close your hand, bring your hand back on top, the top hand back on top. This time, we're gonna to go to the same spot, but we're gonna get there a little bit differently. Take your fingertips and start to walk them like a circle. So away from you and then up towards the top of your head. And reach, reach, reach through the arm, extend until the bicep becomes in a, or until the bicep aligns with the ear and then start to open the head and roll open the chest as you walk the arm around in a big circle. You'll notice some sensation in the armpit or maybe in the chest here. And then bring your arm back around to that same spot that we just swept the arm to. That's another way to get into this pose. You just have to have um, shoulders that are willing to move in that range of motion if you get there this way. Take one more breath here and then sweep your hand across and join. This is called open books. And this is something you can do at home if you feel like you want some more space in your chest. Take your top arm now and press into the ground and slowly come up to a seat, noticing that the blood might rush to your head a little bit. And I'm just gonna have you switch sides so you can still 
um, see the screen. See the screen. So switching over to the other side, think about your spine and your tailbone being in alignment and being parallel to the back of the mat. Stack your shoulders and stack your hips and then make a little pillow for your head. And I'm on my battery pack right now. Let me make an adjustment here. There we go. And then stack your top arm on your right and you know exactly where we're going. Let's scrape the fingertips up across the ceiling and open up our chest, open up your head too, so that your eye gaze looks at the ceiling. We're all gonna move at different speeds. Just move at the speed that works for you. Begin to invite in that openness and that rotation in the thoracic spine. So when we brought our legs across our body with the straps, we were moving in the hips and kind of in the pelvis more. Now we're trying to keep the hips more fixed and neutral and move above the pelvis in our thoracic spine. So I always like to think of the, um, this is the stretch that you do so you don't hurt yourself putting on your seatbelt. <laughs> so remember, you can make this dynamic. You can invite this hand back, reset it all up again, pull the knees tighter in the chest and go back into that pose again. You can just hang out and breathe and allow the tissues to adapt in that way or you can continue with sweeps and making it more dynamic, whatever your preference is. Let's bring the hand back and come to our start position again and try it just in that other way, where you take the top hand and walk the fingertips, making it the biggest circle you can make. So extending through the fingers, bringing the bicep along the ear, and right when the bicep brushes the ear, allow that to be the cue to start rolling open the chest, roll open the gaze. And then continuing to move the arm and this reach this extended full range of motion into this chest opener. We want to have mobility in our thoracic spine, but if we get sticky and stuck and we lose mobility, the body is going to find the mobility somewhere else. Typically, it goes to the lumbar spine. And that's how we can get our get uh, low back injuries is by doing something that the lumbar spine is supposed to do and the body is right. Um, doing something that the T-spine is supposed to do, thoracic spine, and then the lumbar spine having to pick up the weight. Let's take that left hand and bring it back. And join the right hand. And then take your top hand, press yourself into the ground, nice and slow, I'm moving a little quickly, and come up into a seated. From your seat, let's move into tabletop position. So last two weeks, we did a seated series. We're gonna skip that just so we can do some new exercises today. Coming into your tabletop, make sure your knees are hips distance apart. Wrists are somewhat under the shoulders. Spread the fingers nice and wide. And we worked on engaging the lats more so that the wrists don't take so much of the work here. <clears throat> spread the fingers and press the fingertips in the ground. You'll notice the knuckles will get kind of white. And then find some torque our screw in the right arm by pretending like you have a, a jar lid under the right hand, screw that jar lid tight to the right, and then the left hand, screw that jar lid to the left. See if you can feel any muscles turn on in the forearms or even in the uh, lats when you do that. Good. Now, bend your elbows out to the side and then sweep them back towards the, the midline and the knees and pack your shoulders down your body. Your eye gaze should be down at the floor here. Just listen to my voice. You should have energy coming through the crown of the head. Now with this activation with the fingers, your forearms will probably start to fatigue, but I'm gonna keep reminding you to find that activation because over time, you're gonna get stronger and be able to support yourself in this position. Let's move into cow pose by pulling our chest down toward the ground, lifting the eye gaze. You can bend the elbow slightly and lengthen through the tail. So we have this concave position in our back. We're pulling our heart through our arms to the front of the mat, finding length in the spine. And then on your next exhale, pull the belly button away from the floor, push the rib cage up into a rounded position. So the back of your back is rounding up to the ceiling. Your chin tucks, your eye gaze is now to your thighs and your tail is tucking. Find that corkscrew and pack of the shoulders here, straightening out the arms a bit more. And then on your next inhale, slightly bend the elbows, pull the hands towards the thighs as you pull the chest down and move into your cow pose. You can transition into your cat pose whenever you want and keep moving in cow and cat. And this is what I want you to think about. I want you to imagine your spine. 
And imagine each vertebra of the spine creating space. So that pulling motion when you come to cow, lengthening, creating space in your spine. And then trying to imagine each of your vertebra articulating. Sometimes we get a little sticky and chunks of our spine move rather than each individual vertebra. So if you can visualize that and imagine what you're trying to accomplish here, maybe you can unstick some of those spots. After your last round of cat-cow, bring your spine into neutral. Take your big toes and put them together and open up your knees wide and send your hips back to your heels. Now, some knees don't like this deep of flexion. So if you're somebody that can stand it, go ahead and come into child's pose. If you're somebody that struggles with your knees bending this much, if you have those towels here, you can roll up your towel and put it back behind your knee. That might help take some of the pressure out of the knees or just keep the hips stacked over the knees and come more into a puppy shape. So hopefully those are some tips to help you get more into this relaxation pose, this child's pose. Take a round or two of breath here. Move back into your conscious breathing and feel the rib cage expand and touch the thighs. Take your fingertips and walk them to the front of the mat as much as you can so that the wrists and the elbows come off the mat. The shoulders might move into the ears, that's okay, but just notice if you can feel the back muscles turning on as the fingers walk forward. Press the fingertips into the ground. Now listen, find your armpits. Use the muscles right under your armpits, and with your fingertips pressed in the ground, try to pull your fingertips back to your head. Notice if you can feel lat or core activation there. Keep pressing the fingertips in the ground, press the tops of your feet in the ground, and pull yourself back up to your tabletop position. Organize your tabletop, get your feet back into this neutral alignment, knees right under the hips, corkscrew and pack your arms again. So particularly this right arm, Bring the elbow out, corkscrew it, pack the shoulder down, and extend long through the right leg. And you'll notice right away when the right leg comes off, a lot of work goes into the right arm. So engaging that lat with that corkscrew and pack will help. The other thing that'll help is this left leg. Push into the shin, push into the top of the foot. That'll help you engage through the core and make this right leg that's extended lighter. Push through the heel of the right leg, and draw it down. Notice if the right leg wants to cock up, just draw it down. And by the way, I'm not asking you to bring the right leg up to the ceiling and deviate in the spine. Keep your spine neutral, just extend through the right leg. It doesn't have to go high. There's no bonus points for lifting your leg higher. Good. Bring your right leg back down to the ground. We'll try this in the left leg. Now, one thing I want you to be aware of, Notice when the left leg extends, do you shift the weight into the right leg or do you shift the weight into the right hip to do that? I'd like for you to not do that. So that's the core activation. That's the preparation work. Core screw and pack the arms, turn on the core, draw your belly button in a little bit, press into the top of the right leg, get the body nice and stable, then send the left leg long and elevate the left leg. Notice if you want to stack the hip, notice if you want to lift that leg really high and bend in the lower back. Your eye gaze is down. Crown of the head is reaching toward the front of your mat. Back of your neck is long here. Keep corkscrewing and packing your left arm. Keep using your lat to help keep this left leg extended. Nice and relaxed in the neck. No wrinkles in the front or the back. That's your alignment for the neck. Put your left leg down and press your hips back into your child's pose or whatever pose is your rest pose, some of those options. If rolling up towels and placing them behind your knees doesn't do the trick for you, you can also pull your towels or your blankets in front of you and create just a cushion or a pillow or a, for a place for you to rest your head in the front. But when we come to child's pose, we want to be in that pose of observation. Just take a moment to breathe consciously and then to calm the nervous system after the work that we did. Walk the fingertips forward, press the fingertips in the ground, press the tops of the feet in the ground, engage your low belly, pull yourself back up into your tabletop position. Try to find neutral in your spine. So you're not super, super in cow, you're not super, super in cat, just neutral spine, flat back, pack your shoulders. We're gonna do something that I like to call loaded child's pose here. So just send the hips back a little bit. This is the one, 
And then when my hips come forward, I'm gonna drive my right knee toward my elbow and try to step onto the outside of my hand. If your foot doesn't make it there, that's fine. Your foot lands where it lands. You can just pick it up and see if you can encourage it to arrive next to your hand. Once your foot comes next to your hand, I forgot to mention something. At this point, hopefully your blocks were at the top of your mat and they're close by because we're gonna cue, cue them in a second. From here, press your right arm into your right leg and your right leg into your right arm. Good. When you press the arm and the leg and the leg and the arm, can you feel the core turn on? Now bring your awareness to your back leg. Press the back of your shin and the back of the top of your foot in the ground and turn on your back glute. Rise up into proposal pose or a 90-90 shape. Keep working that back leg. Bring your hands to your hips and see if you can find neutral in your hips. From this neutral shape, keep pressing down through the back of the leg. And then the leg that's in the back, bring that arm up overhead. As the arm reaches, keep squeezing the glute, allowing the front of the hip to open and energetically pressing your knee down to the ground. This front leg, you don't want it to be like a noodle. Find some torque and some attention or a isometric hold in the front leg. So if I were to push my knee in, I can't get it to move and I can't get it to move out. So working all throughout the body, bring this top arm back down to the ground. And now grab your blocks and frame your foot. So now your hand comes out of the foot with a block on either side. By the way, you can use your blocks on whatever, whatever elevation you wish. Now curl your back toe, lift your back knee off the ground. And what the blocks do here is they bring your arms or they bring the cl ground closer to your arms and they allow the spine to straighten out. So if I didn't have blocks here, I might be a little bit more rounded in my spine. So this gives me the option to take my chest off my thigh, straighten out my back, so you can play with your blocks or the settings or whatever you're working with and see how that can influence your workout today. If your thing lowering your hands is really low, maybe come into your fingertips here. Start to saw a little bit now so that your heel in the back comes up and then the heel presses away. So you're lengthening through the calf muscle of the leg that's in back. Keep that glute squeezed in the black back leg a little bit, but you're also stretching out the fascia in the back of the foot. Good, pause here. Your front leg should really feel like it's working. And then once again, see if maybe you can take your hands off your block completely, taking your chest off of your thighs, bringing your hands back to the block or the floor, take your back knee, place it down, clear the blocks out of the way, bring your hand inside your foot, walk it wide, and then take it back behind you. Take one breath in child's pose. Send your hips back, take one breath, walk the fingers forward. On your exhale, pull yourself back up <clears throat> and let's set up for this low lunge on the other side of the body. Actively send the hips back, drive the knee towards the left elbow and step. Remember, if you don't make it, just step wherever you make, bring that foot in. Press your left arm into the left leg, the left leg in the left arm. So get this isometric hold here. See if you can turn on the low belly, find some time under tension or create some tension in the musculature. Press the top of the back foot in the ground, draw the low belly in, rise up to your proposal pose. Take your hands on your hips, notice, notice we might be in this. Be in this tilt 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 tilt. Tilt. So just tuck your tail, bring your shoulders over your hips and then squeezing back glute, the whatever leg is back, Take that arm and rise it, or raise it up into the air. Now push down through your knee, squeeze the glute, open up the front of the hip, and then remember to find some tension in this leg. So you can push through the heel or turn on the glute in this leg or hug the quad muscle to the bone so this front leg doesn't move either. Take one more breath in this shape <clears throat> and then bring your hands back down to the ground. This time you can bring your foot in a little bit, frame it with the blocks, Organize your spine with the block. So elongate the spine, curl your back toe, and then lift your back leg. Playing around with how much you want your chest off your thigh here. The more your chest is off your thigh, the more you're gonna have to work in your core. So picking the shape that feels good to you, and then doing this little sawing motion. 
getting length in the quad muscle. And then as the heel elevates over the toes, spread the toes, and then feel some stretch in the fascia or the bottom of the foot. After a few little sawing motions, you can hang out in one shape more than the other. Go ahead, see if you can remove the hands from support and coming into your low lunge without any support. You don't have to do that, it's just an option. Bring your hands back down to the blocks or even spread them away, bring them to the floor. Drop your back knee, open up your leg again, bring the left hand inside and then bring yourself back into tabletop and into child's pose. From child's pose, notice if your heart rate has increased or elevated from the work that you just did. Try to use your tool of conscious breathing, lengthening the inhale and exhale, and notice if you can have an effect on your heart rate. And then we're gonna make our way to standing through one final pose here. Walk the fingertips forward again, pull yourself back up into your tabletop. Actually, let's give the wrists a little bit of work before we move into our uh, standing work. Just start to make some circles, spread the fingers wide, start to make some circles around the wrists. Only make your circle as big as it feels welcome in your wrists. <clears throat> And then pause, take your circles in the other direction. So the more my shoulders go over my fingertips, the more intense it might feel. And the more I pull my hips back toward my heels, the less intense it might feel. And then let's pause, change the orientation of your fingers. Turn the fingers in towards one another like a bulldog. Elbows are out. And then pressing in equally into all of your fingers, start to find some circles again. Notice how this might change the sensation or stretch in your wrists. And then take your circles. Oops, what's the other direction? There it is. Take your circles in the other direction. So remember, if I'm too wristy for you, you spend too much time on your hands and knees, you can always go to fists for wrists for some of the stuff that we're working on. For our final pose from tabletop position, I'm gonna invite you to curl your toes. Now you really wanna corkscrew and pack your shoulders here to turn on the lats. Draw your low belly in, knit your ribs and hover your knees right above your floor. So my knees are about two inches off the floor. My back is flat, my eye gaze is down to the ground. So if you're looking at a computer and then if you start to lose it, just keep packing shoulders and then finding that rotation, pressing into your fingertips, hovering the knees above the floor, come down out of this anytime you need a rest or maybe we can all come down out of it together. So we're gonna move into standing from this pose. So I'll just show you really quickly. Once again, we're gonna rise up and then we're gonna walk our hands back to our feet. So that's what we're gonna do. So go ahead, hover, walk your hands back to your feet. So this is like a forward fold, but our head isn't so far below our heart. Now, can you drop your booty and lift your chest, push through the heels, and come up to standing. That's one way. If you have blood pressure or you get dizzy going from downward dog to standing, that is a strong way to move from downward dog to standing without really dropping your head below your heart. Let's come to a strong mountain pose on our mat. Feet are about hips or shoulders distance apart. Toes are tracking forward as much as possible. Lift and spread all your toes, Press them back down on the mat, and then slightly draw the mat together. Feel the glutes turn on, keep a soft bend in the knees. From that lower body activation, elongate through the spine. I apologize, my feedback. Elong I have a new mic ordered, it's coming next week. Elongate through the spine. Now lift your heart, bring the shoulders up in the ears, allow them to float down the back, open up your palms. Slightly engage your glutes and just breathe in this strong mountain pose. And notice how you can just stand there or you can really corkscrew, pack the shoulders, open the palms, pull the mat together and feel all of the muscles under tension in this strong mountain pose, time under tension. Inhale your arms up, reach overhead. Shoulder injuries just come across the chest. Otherwise, take a bind, grab your left wrist with your right hand. 
push down through your left leg and pull your left arm up and over, moving into half moon pose. Notice if you have a tendency to collapse the trunk here. So open up the chest, open up the armpit of the arm that you're elongating. Like you're between two panes of glass. Keep breathing here, release and switch your grip. Left hand grabs right arm, pull up, elongate both ribs away from the pelvic bowl and take a side bend on the other side. So I'm pushing through my right leg as much as I'm pulling my right arm or whatever side you're working in order to create length in the body. Keep breathing. Come back up to the midline. Let's move faster. Switch your grips. Come up and long, create length. Don't collapse. Just elongate over to one side. One breath. Inhale here. Exhale, come back up to center. Switch your grip. Elongate. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, come over to the side. Good, little glute squeeze here. Inhale, come back up, release your grips. Exhale, cactus your arms, pull your elbows down. As you do, lift your heart, lift your gaze. Let your hip flexors drift a little bit forward, a tiny little back bend here. Inhale, lengthen the arms again. Bring your hands to prayer. Let's make our way back down to the mat. So coming into a little bit of a fold. Uh, actually, bring your hands to your pelvis. So when you forward fold, it's important that your pelvis rotates. So if your pelvis is in neutral and you're trying to forward fold, that's where you kind of get stuck touching your toes. So let's bring our hands to our pelvis. Let's first anterior tilt our pelvis, then you can drift or drape your chest over your thighs for your forward fold. Place your hands down onto the mat and walk yourself out. Walk yourself out into a plank. When you arrive in your plank, you have an option to lower your knees immediately or hang out in this plank with me. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Press your fingertips into the ground like you're gripping basketballs. Turn on your corkscrew. Find your pack in your shoulders. Now working your way down, knit your front ribs together. Pull your belly button in, almost like you're hollowing out your body. Squeeze your glutes. Hug your quadriceps to the bone and then push through your heel or try to create tension in your body. Better yet, do this, push your hands and feet away, right? So like you're trying to stretch the mat out under you, just find tension in your body. Option to come to your knees at any point. So let's bring our knees down to the ground and push our hips back into child's pose. Tops of the feet go down. Take a deep breath into your child's pose here. And then bring yourself back up to tabletop. Let's come over to our side body, eventually making our way back to our back. Sit up nice and tall here. And then cave your chest in, round your back. So you're lengthening your tail. See if you can roll yourself down on the ground. Bring your arms down to your sides, bend your knees and place the bottoms of your feet on the ground. At this point, Take your eyes off the computer screen and make sure you're looking up at the ceiling. Lift all your toes and press them down to the ground. Make sure your feet are nice and stable. And then press the feet in the ground and lift the hips, come into bridge pose. Hanging out in your bridge pose, pretend like you're squeezing a playground ball in between your inner thighs. So turn on the inner thighs, allow them to work. And by turning on the inner thighs and squeezing the glutes, notice if you can create more space in the hip flexors are more length in your quadriceps muscles in the front. Look down at your belly and take a breath in. Notice and see if your belly can fill up and expand here. You have the option to come out of this pose and go back into it anytime you wish. Or if you'd like to stay here and work with me, we gave that cue where you roll slightly under your right shoulder and then pull your left shoulder blade under. Then roll slightly over to your left shoulder, pull your right shoulder blade over. over under to the midline, and then keep pulling shoulder blades to the midline. And then maybe your hands come together for a bind. Notice how your chest feels open here. Maybe even getting into a, pick, a pec stretch if you're binding through the hands. If you're binding, release the hands, take them out to the sides, and then lower your seat back down to the ground. Hmm. Take your right leg, cross it over your left. Pull the whole unit 
of your legs into your chest. Make sure that right leg that's crossed over the toes reflects back to the shin. Pull that whole unit into your chest. One round of breath here. And then take the left leg, put it back down. Uncross the right leg. Cross the left leg over the right leg. Flex the toes back, push the knee away. Lift the right leg off the mat. Pull that whole unit into your chest. Use your breath to breathe into that shape. We're preparing for our final relaxation for our Shavasana now. So the screen is gonna be um, quieter and I'm gonna be more still on the screen. So you might think that the screen has frozen and it hasn't. Um, we have good Wi-Fi here. So if it gets quiet and I'm not talking or I'm not moving, that's just part of our Shavasana. Put your right leg down. And then let the bottoms of the feet find each other and open up the knees for your reclined butterfly pose and maybe rotate open the palms of your hands. Just take a few rounds of breath into this shape or if there's any other shape that you love in your yoga practice and you really wanna do, you can take that shape. Otherwise you can stay here in this reclined butterfly position or start to slide the feet away coming into your corpse pose or your final relaxation pose. Or if you'd like to keep your knees bent and be in class the way we started class with the knees bent, that's fine too. Or even if you wanna be on your belly or your side body, whatever shape you want for your final relaxation pose, let's find it. Doing a quick body scan, soften your jaw, open your mouth, separate the teeth, pull the tongue away from the roof of the mouth and the teeth. Soften your throat. Soften the muscles of digestion, all your organs. Think of all the organs in your torso and just soften the space around them. Let the feet just flop open to the sides. Notice any residual tension in the body that's making you think that you need to support yourself. The ground has got you completely supported right now. So try to let go and turn off. We're gonna remain here in silence and then I'll bring you back with my voice. So just know that we're gonna be in silence for a bit. to transition into the rest of your day. You can start by being, bringing in a conscious inhale, a long and conscious exhale. Start to move your head maybe side to side, bringing one ear toward the mat and then bringing your other ear toward the mat. As you're moving your head gently side to side, consider wiggling your fingers and your toes and then moving from your extremities to your wrists and your ankles, possibly even elbows and knees eventually moving so that you can bring your knees into a bent position and roll over onto your side again, like we started class in that Shavasana B shape. Please pause for me for a moment in Shavasana B, resting your head on your arm and take a moment to think of our practice and just think of a sensation or an emotion or something that came up for you in your practice that was unique and new for you today. And then press yourself back up to a seated position. Remembering that we're on in our laboratory on our yoga mat. Come to a comfortable seat. Allow your sits bones to reconnect with the earth, the spine to elongate and to be the conduit for the crown of the head to reach up to the sky. 
bring your hands to Anjali Mudra. Press into the hands, let the elbows float up. and Feel the expansion in your chest here. It's a pleasure and an honor to share this practice with you. Thank you for joining me. Namaste.